everybody this is Mike with Plus A Precision welcome back to the shop um, first off let me say thank you to all my subscribers and to all my new subscribers uh, thanks for subscribing and being part of my channel hopefully you enjoy the content and um, I just try to keep putting out as much content as I can so this week I have um, an old new project which is simply magnetic parallels. Now, these were started years ago when I was an apprentice and I never got around to finishing them. Um, what it is, is it's a piece of aluminum. Uh, in this case, I will say five and a half, an inch and 38, 7, 16, somewhere in that area. And then half inch thick almost, maybe a little less. But what 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 I did in the shop, the job shop, uh, was, and a lot of guys did these. You've probably seen them around. You just take and you drill and ream a bunch of holes. And then, in this case, I used a one thou under reamer and pounded these dowels in. Well, the dowels obviously are still proud of the surface even if I had the smallest ones that were available to me in the shop. This side is started grinding where all the dowels are at least flush. Um, here's one where you can still see the dowels are freshly cut off. Again this was many years ago and then I never really had a need for them. I wasn't allowed to use them um, in the shop that I ended up leaving from where I apprenticed at. <clears throat> but these are very handy in a lot of situations on the surface grinder. Um, in tool and die work, what you use them for a lot of times is you'd have details with a heel that was machined in, cast in, whatever, and you needed to grind this thing on the surface grinder. Well, how do, you got to get this thing up off the grinder chuck, and you would use your magnetic parallels. These again are shop made. Here's an example of some purchased ones. Um, obviously a lot nicer. And, you know, I don't know what they run. They always come in handy. Not a bad thing to have in your toolbox for doing setup work. I don't know if I can throw something together to give an example of what they're So for. here's an example of what you might use one for. Um, you can't just readily set this on the chuck. You want to surface grind this side. So you got to get it down on that chuck. So you put your blocks down. And I'll bring you in close so you can see this a little bit better. But you can take, set that on there like that. And the magnetic pull travels through the blocks and into your detail. If you don't feel safe like this, then you can always, you can always add other blocks to block it in and increase the holding power. Um, which is normally something you do when you're using magnetic parallels just to be safe so you don't throw anything off the grinder chuck. Nothing gets a, a rise out of all your coworkers as you slamming something against the wall or into the dust collection system. Uh, if it's happened to you, you know what I'm talking about. But that's what they're for. And I'm just going to grind these and get these out of the way. One less project that I got lingering around from years and years ago. And it's pretty straightforward, but I promise to bring you in. Let me show you what I'm talking about here, how this kind of fits. All right, so here you can see the protrusion or emboss. And now we have sufficient clearance between the chuck, surface plate in this case, and we can grind this top surface. And we don't have to worry about um, throwing it off the chuck for the most part. But that's what these are used for. And again, I'm just gonna wrap these up so they're all finished. And if you're interested in making some, you know, I mean, there's not much to these. You can make these out of brass or bronze or any type of non-ferrous, non-magnetic material along with some magnetic material. And that's how they're done. So let's get started.
this one. Not sure how good you're hearing me because it's kind of loud with the wheel going and the phase converter. But you can see I've got this marked up with some pencil. After rough grinding this, which was just a lot of grinding so I didn't bother videoing it, it ends up with a slight bow in it. That's why I've got these small 1,000 shims just under each side so that way it doesn't pull it down too much. And I've got the um, my magnetic chuck turned down to 20 to 25%. Um, so we're going to give this just a grind, clean this up. And so technically we should see a pattern forming starting from the center outward. So let's kind of see what happens. One thing you can do when you're grinding aluminum is you can use a little light oil. I use WD-40. And that will help me with that. Keeping the wheel not loading up. And adding a slight bit of lubrication for the aluminum. generated or minimize the amount of heat generated and I don't want to get a bunch of build up in the wheel which can cause a poor surface finish not that that's super critical but whenever you're making something you're always trying to do the best you can Well, the camera stopped while I was moving it, but I haven't done anything, and you can see, I think, there's very little grinding marks on there whatsoever. There might be a couple little pepper tracks here and there from when I was roughing it, taking about a half hour at a time. But... My secret has always been uh, WD-40, and you know, obviously, I purchased this can myself. No sponsors here, and um, I've been using the WD-40 for 
long as I've been in the trade. It works on the aluminum, it works on Amco bronze, it works on bronze, works on brass, works pretty much on most non-ferrous materials. Um, and it gives you a good finish. I'll do the other side, probably do that off camera, and then I'll take you over to the surface plate and we'll uh, we'll see whether they came out flat. All right, here we are on the surface plate. <clears throat> let's see what, uh, let's see how they came out. So you can see we're set roughly at zero. So across here. There's zero across there. Zero across there. Zero across there. That's good. Yeah, I don't know. <clears throat> Maybe this indicator needs to be sent in for calibration. It's never been done. So you get into some weird areas and it it must catch the stylus a certain way and put a little pressure on it. But otherwise you can see and you can you can see I can I can still dial it up higher, so I'm not I'm not at a see and there it moves again, so The beauty of using a tense indicator. I have a 50 That's million indicator. Good, I mean, if you're using these, you're usually not going for with intense just because of the whole way the setup is. I could probably flip these one more time and uh, get them right on the money. My chuck hasn't been ground in a while either. So, yeah, okay. Keep making excuses, right? But there you have it. This is my way of uh, grinding magnetic parallels, making magnetic parallels. Sorry you couldn't see the whole process, but that had been started long ago. And then when you get into the finishing stages, using the WD-40 to make your life easier. Uh, it works. It's cheap. It's not anything fancy. There's no fancy grinding wheel. Um, I can include a picture of the grinding wheel with all the information on the grit and the bonding agent if you'd like um, that's no problem but we've come to the end of another one thanks for watching thanks for commenting thanks for subscribing if you haven't subscribed please consider subscribing um, every little bit helps good comments bad comments it's all good it's all conversation right this is Mike with plus eight precision thanks for watching